Hi everyone, I am Craig Williams and I'm going to show you through my remix for Wongo. So let's get into it. Um, I had a quick look at this before I started the video and I looked and it's for some reason I didn't go back and really work the parts but I think it I think because it just worked I tested it out at a couple of different shows and it worked really well so um, there you go if it works it works you don't need to just because it's on paper it doesn't look right if it's going all right it's good so it's a pretty simple track we just have uh, a little drum bus if you saw the last tutorial I did the same thing again on this one um, I have the so here to here is just drums as you can see here kick claps and all that sort of stuff I have two of the sh101 which is the uh, the bass back uh, the bass synth back here and what's some other ones that i use in this and then i just i think i just used some parts of his uh, i used his uh the vocal and the little uh, lead part Ah, and I also use the Volker. So let's get into it and I'll show you what's going on. So the drums, pretty basic. There's not too, it's not too crazy or anything like that. Nice little groove. Uh, I use a combination of, um, the, it looks like the tribalism kit from Machine and the, um, and the TR8. Uh, TR8 is really good for just getting a, a groove going super quickly and then I tend to go to the machine um, from Native Instruments to add the extra little bits and, and pieces and stuff like that. The one trick that I did again is if I bring over, if I bring up the mixer, you can see here I'm sending them to bus 20. So then on bus 20 that's going out of the computer and then through the console and then uh, I think I think I use the analog heat on this one um, and then with that added in this is what comes back via the heat so you can hear it's pretty distorted and whatnot and then that on top of the drums I think it just really adds like a, a nice little crunchiness to the top it's without it sounds a little bit flat and then it just adds a little bit more Going through the drums, nothing too crazy. A little EQ. I use this um, PSP Vintage Warmer on all of them. I find if I just add a little bit of drive and a little bit of knee, just boost that that kick up just enough. Um, what else have we got? Clap. Just an EQ on there. I think because it's from the yeah, and then I've sent it to a, a little bit of reverb. Then we have like a bunch of these like little, just little bits and pieces. Just to kind of get a little bit more of a groove going. Then we have these two hats. Kind of driving along a little bit more. Again, this is a TR8 on the top here. And then I just have this uh, from the tribalism down the bottom to kind of help push the, the hats forward a little bit and help give a little bit of a pace to the song. Um, the crash is just from the TR8. I've used that one much. Actually, I think that's from, that isn't from the TR8, that's from the, let's go down here, that would be, this one. Uh, the addictive drums. It's a really good live drum sounds. I think I just wanted a different crash on that one. Um, again, for most of these sounds, it's pretty basic. Just some EQ. A uh, couple have like a little bit of compression to help push them through, but I find that having the drum bus really helps give me um, a little bit more on the sound and helps drive it a little bit more. Uh, usually when I have 
something like the hats, I'll put a, um, a side chain compression on there to help kind of pump it along. You can see that working there. But if it, the sound doesn't need it, there's no need to put like there's no need to put a side chain compression on a sound like this, so it's not going to interfere with anything. Um, the main sound behind the track is the uh, the 101, um, and that's just a pretty basic line. And then all I've done is just got is I kind of just played along with it live, so you can hear it's opening up a little bit more there, and. All I've got on that is a little EQ, this Transex to give a little bit more punch. Uh, and I, I think I started off with the more punch um, preset on there. And then I just, again, a little sidechain compression to help give the kick some space in there. We just have the, the two tracks. This one is just a filtered one, and then this is the regular. I usually split the tracks like that because the automation in Logic is not quite as tight as Ableton. Like, you can't go to the exact beat. So with that, instead of having to have, like, the automation and everything going crazy, I just put in a new track, have the filter on one of them, and then the other one is non-filtered. Um, next, we have the little Volca creepy sound. And I just put a little reverb on there. Again, some sidechain compression. And I just played that in live uh, as it was going along and just cut the bits out, uh, cut the different bits that I needed to use. Um, the next sound that I have in there is this. It's the same on these two tracks here. If I can just solo this one out. And that's kind of a play on the on the part that he sent me over. All I did was took little snippets here. So this is the the original one. So I took those parts Cut, or cut out each of the little bits and then chucked it into the, the little built-in logic sampler and then went along, if I bring up the keyboard, let's see where these are. There we go. So I just went along and just played along, uh, played along until I come and got a little pattern that I was happy with. So then when you play it along with the track, just trying to put my own little flair on what he'd already done instead of just like, uh, I can just recreate the sound. I'd rather just use the parts a little bit more creatively um, and again on both of those sounds we have just a little EQ and then I have a sidechain compression on this one and then this one is during the breakdown so no need and then I just have it getting sent to a reverb and then sent to the tape delay um, after that we have the all the vocal parts these ones here. So if I solo those out, we have. I created house music. I am house music. House music. House music. So I one thing that I usually do with the delay is if I want to get creative, but I don't want to mess up the original sound, is I'll double up like this, and then this one I had the delay designer, and I brought the dry all the way down because we already have it in the first one here. This is the all wet, and then this this uh, plugin will just pan each side. So if I just solo that out, house music, house music, house music. So you can hear. So it just adds a little bit more to the track. Um, I mean, it's pretty basic, 
but these little things can help sort of keep the listener um, tuned in and whatnot. I uh, have this little I'm the that just keeps repeating. We just have a little filter on there. Back down again and then filters back up. I have this one that I sent out. It's a, it's just this sound, this uh, bit here. I created house music. I am house music. And that's just the this vocal part getting sent out through the uh, monotron delay, and then I just played along with the track, so you can see I'm the slowing the delay down, and then I speed it up, I speed it up, speed it up. I like it because it's nice and gritty and it's not super perfect or anything like that. And then one thing that I said to Wongo when I was doing the remix is I'm not gonna have someone say DJ in any of the tracks that I did. So to stop with that profanity, I just put a beat sound in there instead. <laughs> because honestly, who wants to hear DJ in a club track? No one. Uh, apart from that, we have these are little effects that were from the original parts. Uh, one thing that I do add to my tracks pretty regularly is uh, just a reverse ride. Just trying to make it sound like I didn't make this on a Casio. Um, just trying to keep people interested. I have these little... To try and suck the sound in a little bit. And then... I just have these little Juno 106 parts that I recorded a bunch of different ones. And that just, they're like little swells along the way. So that is about it. Um, one thing that I did, uh, that I do, and I showed you on the last one, but if you didn't catch that video is this version here is my last mix down that I did. Um, so this is the last mix down. And then what I do is I keep that in the session so then I can A, B as I'm mixing down the record. So then uh, at the end of it, if it's not better than the last mix I did, I, need, I know that I need to go back and rework it again. Um, so I, I kind of use myself as a reference when trying to better the mix. Um, but yeah. That is about it. If you have any questions or anything, um, feel free to reach out. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to share any ideas or anything like that that I did for the track. So until next time, see you later.